first arrived. Emergency. Please first arrive. Emergency. to the queens hello ladies gentlemen and everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum and welcome back to stardom quest the best weekly stardom podcast anywhere in the world i'm as always alex and i am joined by dylan hi dylan hi alex hi everybody um alex have you ever seen or heard of the wrestler rising hayato i've heard of rising hayato yes he is your ideal wrestler. I, I like he is your soulmate if your soulmate was a wrestler. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll send you a. Hold on. Everybody, I, this is. Right, I sent it in the Discord. Okay. Oh. That's him without makeup on. Okay. He usually is wearing makeup. And I found out that he existed this past weekend at All Together Again. And I, the first note I took about that about that match that he was in was. Alex would definitely like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I just needed to I needed to let you know that Rising Hayato exists and he is going to become your favorite. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh Velke is in our private uh Stardom Quest server. Um, we because record? we have him as yeah, we have a guest. We have him as a guest a lot. And I sent I sent the link to the Rising Hayato picture, and Velke said, and I quote, lol, bribing Alex with twinks I see. <laughs> you know, you know what's gonna, this is going to make it even funnier. Um, you are not the only person to say this after all together. I woke up after that, and <laughs> in, I think it's Sandra's Discord, somebody had tagged me and was like, this is Alex's perfect man. And I was like, what's going yeah. on here? I think it was a bead was like, oh yeah, rising Hayato, you'll love him. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I can't. You're about to become an all Japan pro wrestling mark right now. Yeah. Like that, 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 like that is maybe not. That's a bit. If I but he's wrestling. really good too. He's really good. That's the thing. It's okay. like if he was shit, I would be like, uh, but he's like, he's quite. So he's good. on the hook end, like we're at hook, here. like watchable as a wrestler. Oh yeah, 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 and, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Okay, all right. I like it. We, we will... He's great. Yeah. All right, we, I, we, I, we, I, we thought I, I needed to let you know that. I need well, I needed to let you know that. It's good. It's crazy that you're not the only person who said that. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> we know you. We know you, homie. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, wearing the heart on the sleeve, I guess. Um, all right. Well, I don't think the show can go up from there. Uh, if you want to stand, you may stand. If you want to sit, you may sit. <laughs> uh, oh man. Yeah. So um, all right. Stardom. Oh no, not stardom. I'm completely thrown now. Um, this podcast is brought to you with a five star network. Head on over to five star network dot co, uh, where we have all of our articles and podcasts about the wonderful world of wrestling. Over the past weekend, there was an all together uh, wrestling summit done with you, Peps, and Sandra, and you guys got to talk about that. And there's obviously podcasts that discuss basically companies from all around the world. There's uh, Puro Gems, there's Watch Teach, there's us. Uh, there's the wrestle update, which covers like everything for cage match. It's there's so much going on. There's no limit wrestling show, which you will find soon. Um, the second episode is coming in a couple weeks. Um, and yeah, uh, Five Star Network is is doing some things. I and I say this basically every week because I'm always keeping myself busy or I'm trying to. Um, me this time it's me and Doc. Doc Ooh. Spoon, our lovely graphic. A graphic designer um we are working on something and by we i mean i am and then i am begging him to uh please help me because i'm terrible at graphic design uh and that's something that if it goes well um i've been working on it the past few days if it goes well it will be very interesting to everybody listening to this uh it, it's it's a star specific thing right. so uh we're working on that right now hopefully it will be done within the next two weeks or so because if it's not, it's going to get fucked up. Right, so. okay. <laughs> that sounds fun. I'm uh, very intrigued. Yep. I don't I don't even know what this is. Uh, I'm such a passive member of the five-star thing. Like, everybody else is pitching things, and I'm just like, I do a show. <laughs> Here's my yeah, show. I get bored. I, I, I just, yeah, I, I'm just, 
and I'm always around. That's the other issue. Is that like you know, Xavi says, "Hey, you you want to do a show?" And I'm just like, "I have a perfect idea for it. Let's do mm-hmm. it." And <laughs> then we did it. Uh, and then I I see something cool on Twitter. I'm just like, "I want to do that." And then I I tell Doc that I want to do that, and then we start doing it. Um, Great. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. I worked a lot on something so minuscule about it last night. I worked on it for hours. Excuse me. So I, it better. I guess what it is something. because I want. Yeah, is it ahead. a stardom faction thing like they do with Noah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, per- it's exactly perfect. That. Look, I uh, know this is. I know you inside out. This is great. Yeah. No, you know, I I have such a like hyper fixation on roster charts. Like I love them so much, but they don't do a lot of English ones outside of like Noah. Like Noah's the main company that does like really in depth and like nice looking roster mm-hmm. charts. And I have been wanting to make a roster chart forever. Um, but because and this is a bit inside baseball, because uh, we have been told not to use direct stardom renders, like the renders that they have on the site, uh, as a organization we aren't we they don't really like it when they when people use them uh i had to find free to use images of all of the wrestlers to cut out headshots of them and i had to do all of that last night so i got you know it, and there's like 35 wrestlers on the roster now so that was a fucking pain in the ass <laughs> but uh hopefully i get through that and we can kind of cook it up and release it on the five star network twitter in the next couple of weeks before all of the factions change on the 25th yeah so that's, that's the hope <laughs> all right that sounds fun i like it i, I i'm crazy how i guessed that that's fantastic all right um if you went on discord ever i've been talking about it for like a week and i finally started it <laughs> well, i do go on there i go into the stardom quest channel to talk with the lovely people i guess i'm just doing that's my true. bit do. otherwise i'm not i don't i don't care for it anyway um so over the past week in stardom there's been five shows um and there's only one match up from all of them so there's no real point in us just running down the results of every match where oh sai ida lost to this person sai ida beat waka hey, she won twice tai beat... this year yeah or yeah. this year this like a way to tie beat this trio it's 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 of no use to anybody those results really don't matter so the stuff that did matter from the past week uh the best place to start is the only match that's up is the Queen's Quest versus a way to tie five on five elimination match. This was kind of a prelude to the pay per view where it's a six on six match where the loser has to leave their faction. Um, did you watch the match? It was great, wasn't it? Like they just went and yeah, just kept was... going. It's crazy. It's crazy how good stardom can be when you can watch <laughs> it, right? Like, um, <laughs> like, because, like, and I, I like the pay per views, but there is a certain a vibe to like the smaller shows that is very nice especially the ones in osaka edian number two and in cork and hall and you know in, in some of the venues that they care a little bit more about um they're they just have like random matches that are really fucking good and this is one of them and i'm happy that they released it uh you know within a week and not within seven months uh yeah i liked it a lot actually yeah i mean it was like the pace was just crazy like the they did the standard heel segment to start but then once that was over because there's some yeah stuff but because it was elimination rules they just went okay you're gonna do your bit you're out the next people do their bit they're out the next people do their bit they're out like once the heat segment ended there's also a tornado yeah elimination uh just chaos like chaos so once the heat fluid. segment ended yeah. it was just go non-stop different pairings yeah. constantly uh, it was really really fun to watch all, all together uh, so you know, more more tags like this uh, would be appreciated. We love we love our action. It's it's always fun. Um, there was no real like standout pairing because nobody got super long. But I did think Utami looked very good. Which obviously forehead Utami looked good. She's a great wrestler, but I thought she was really impressive. See, <laughs> I was gonna say, I basically wrote down the same thing except instead of Utami, I said Uh <laughs> because of course I did right. Um, yeah, I, I thought that her stuff with Kid looked more uh it, it looked more intense than it has been recently. I feel like they've kind of rested on their feud. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, oh well, we could we could spit on each other and that would be enough because everybody loves us as a pairing. But they actually like did stuff, you know, and interesting stuff together, uh, which has not really been a thing 
uh, in the past few months, I would say. When they are together, they're usually like l one of the less interesting pairings because they've just been paired up so much. Uh, this match wasn't like that. I thought they had, did a lot of good stuff. Um, I thought that the heels did great in the in the opening brawl. Rocco whacked Lady C with somebody's umbrella and just like laughed her ass off about it. Um, Saki Kashima also took a Saki Kashima fan sign and just started hitting Miyu with it. Uh, great, great stuff all overall. And then yeah, once they got into like the action, action it was really, really fun. yeah. No, just a very good match. And maybe because it's the only stardom that I have seen in like three weeks, that might have bumped it up. But it was definitely yeah. a good match to get up because it was really well done, and uh, it does bode well for the six on six match if they can kind of capture any of this energy, which is going to be very difficult in a cage. I mean, at at this rate, I'm going to have seen more new blood than I have stardom. Uh over the past like three months and there's been two new blood shows you know yeah. what i mean uh well three i guess but yeah kind of insane uh that's a that's a problem let's let's, let's call it yeah space that's space. just where we're at i guess um it turns out though that that they've been on like a two week oh yeah tour uh like the like the girls have been like actively dying like you see it on twitter it's like we are finally done thank God, <laughs> and I find that very funny. Um, but that also is an indicator of partially why they can't keep up with. The, yeah, with I mean, I remember when I looked but, at the. I don't know. Have you ever heard of of like a permanent editor? Like you know, like he just get a just have an editor at your office, man. Like I I know they don't want to hire nobody, but like Sonny's Sonny has to go to all the shows. You can hire a second Sonny who doesn't have to go to all the shows. That's all. That's fair. Um, no, I mean I knew they would get behind. Like I remember there was a point last month where I checked the schedule and I was like, they have so many shows, they are screwed, and uh, they have indeed been screwed. Now the aftermath of Queen's Quest and Wado Tai was probably the most important thing because Natsuko's promo really drove home the purpose of this feud. It seems to have gone away from Utami and Saya tension, and more just that Utami isn't it, and she can't do it, and she can't get Queen's Quest firing, and she kind of sucks right now. Because that's what Tora was saying. She was like, hey, you guys can't do shit. We're going to take one of your members. Like, you're fucked. What, like, who are you? You're not the Utami that I fought last time. So... You know, I, I thought from very early on that we weren't going to get a split with, you know, the big three of Queen's Quest. And it seems more and more likely now that that's not going to happen. That the the end goal is, you know, maybe they lose Lady C and that motivates Utami to really get back on track. Or I don't know how they do it, but it seems like this is more about getting her back on the wagon. A, a part of me... A part of me wonders if they... If Queen's Quest even loses. Like, I think they will. But I feel like... This match kind of made me think, oh, well, it's possible if they turn it around uh, in that match at, you know, at the show, um, which I've I've kind of been like on in favor of that is like just have it be like a match and not have to do it three times to prove it, like just have them either figure it out or not figure it out and then move forward. Um, and part of me after this match kind of thought, well, maybe like something can happen because yeah like it has moved a bit away from the saya utami stuff because saya tweeted earlier they had a tag match they went to a to a draw with meltier and saya basically t tweeted that it's like we didn't work terribly together but it's just like we, we are off mm -hmm. you know we're not on the same wavelength and i want to get back on the same wavelength as her and it felt like there is a path to a resolution i just don't know if they're gonna take multiple months to do that or if they just kind of, you know, figure it yeah, out see, in the next two weeks. Because you never know what stardom. The yeah, thing is I think they need to lose players. the June match. Because even Utami's post-show comment was like, I almost feel like I'm going to have to fight on my own to win this. Like, I can't trust anybody, and I need to do this on my own. So it seems to me like that's going to be the moment where they lose because she's trying to do it all herself. And then she kind of has to realize... That she can't win on her own in a faction battle and then for the july pay-per-view that's where they get the win back that's where everything kind of clicks for her again because uh i don't see why they wouldn't drag it out for another week when they have a july pay-per-view card still to fill yeah i i guess you're right there um it's interesting though uh, and after the match it is kind of funny because 
Like, yeah. Natsuko completely got in her head. Like, it was it was all Natsuko. Because, like, obviously, like, Natsuko made everything look, like, she framed it all, right? Because when you look at what actually happened, Natsuko talked some shit. Uh, Utami stayed in the ring, like, dwelling on the shit that she got just got talked. And then Queen's Quest just left. They went backstage. Um, but because Natsuko sowed so much dissent, when Queen's Quest left, you could feel the separation mm-hmm. between her them and Utami, right? Like, it's interesting how much Natsuko affects yes. the situation, right? Like, she was a complete just... She was funny, too. Like, she imitated Ut- Azumi, and Azumi was like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> it's mean. Um, and the crowd, like, the crowd's really interesting, too, because Natsuko is incredibly charismatic, and the crowd, like, would cheer for her, but then they would, like, not want to because they don't want Queen's Quest to break up. Like, so she would, like, say something in a funny way. She'd be like, oh, Tommy, like, uh, your mom's a hoe. She didn't say that. But she would say something funny, everybody would laugh, and then she'd be like, and that's why we're going to kill your faction. Everybody would be like, oh, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> and it was it was very funny. Natsuko really had them eating out of the palm of her hand, and I think Natsuko deserves a lot of credit for that because she is a phenomenal talker, a phenomenal just inc- incredible uh, charisma. It, it's wild that for so long they didn't allow her to speak uh, at all. <laughs> like, that's crazy to me. Because she's great. She's great on the mic and she's great just being... Uh, this is this is an antagonist away to tie in a way that works. Um, they're doing their job fairly well yeah, throughout yeah. this and then just annoying Queen's Quest and ripping them apart and uh, at any gap they get. And this was always kind of one of the better uses of Oedo Tai, was you're never going to push the heels to the top, so you might as well use them to heat up people like Utami, who is, you know, almost quite clearly in, in line for that red belt. Uh, at least to me, it seems like she's a no-brainer to win it at this stage. Um, so, you know, heat people like her back up, because, yeah, they're not going to put either of the belts on a heel. Like, that's not where they're at right now. Um, so you might as well use them to just give these people something to do and heat them back up. So uh, I, I do like this use of a way to tie. I thought Tora got, got across a lot of the main points that she needed to to really focus the story on something because it went from, you know, people didn't know what the hell this was. They were like, oh, Tammy and Sai are going to split. I'm so worried. And when that quite clearly wasn't meant to be the the focus of it. And so now we have a focus. It's Utami. And I thought Tora was very good at that. Um, and yeah, some of the imagery was great with you know, all of Queen's Quest leaving and Utami kind of lurking behind, looking very upset with herself. I th- it was all very well done. So I'm really glad they got this up because this put the entire feud into perspective. So we desperately needed this match and the aftermath. Mm-hmm. So I, I am very happy that Stardom did get it up because uh, I think it, uh, it helped everybody involved. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and, you know, this is obviously, I, I love heaping praise on Natsuko because I've always been a big Natsuko fan. She kind of had that moment, but, you know, I, I like her a lot. Um, it's it's gonna it's impossible to live up to Kagetsu, but Natsuko's doing a great job of, like, finding her way to that role. Because um, Kagetsu, like, his entire thing was pushing others to be better, right? Mm-hmm. And... Natsuko's doing that with Utami, and she has been doing that with Utami since she got back. Like, she's been like, Utami, you are, like, the greatest wrestler ever. Like, I've I've had to deal with you outpacing me for years now. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Like, you need to get your shit together. And I think that is, like, a very valuable uh, character role to fill, right? Because Natsuko can lose, and Natsuko is willing to be the loser if it means, like, pushing someone to the brink and like you know making them nut up or shut up i hate mm. that saying but that's the only thing yeah in my head. um you know i think she i think she's doing a great job of like being in that role that you know you you'd never think anybody can and you know she can't there's nobody that can ever replace kagetsu in that way because he trained everyone <laughs> like he he very clearly had like a real uh connection in that way where it's like yeah he of course he wants everybody to be better because that's like a showing of him being good at his job as well uh and natsuko obviously 
isn't at that level, but she can still do it amazingly. And she's finding her spot as an Oedo Tai leader. That's kind of what you do. And I think she's doing a great job with it. Right it now. took her long enough. That's all I can say. Um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, <it did. laughs> from one good promo onto another, um, Mirai has found something over the last two weeks. I don't know what it was, but it, it, it is here. Uh, we always like said when they did pre-match promos with them, she was always very en- entertaining. And uh, for a while, we were like, "Give." I mean, all yeah. guys. I like, for I a while we were like, "Give Mariah the pro the the microphone. Let her speak. She's funny as hell." So after a recent preview tag, she cut this promo. She said, "Tam Nakano, I am already annoyed today. When I do it with Tam Nakano, my gear comes off and I get all excited." It's that sense of superiority that really pisses that. me off. I will definitely take that belt, you idiot. So not only is that funny as fuck, she was yelling. Like, she she was putting the whole soul into it. She's back. She found the soul. Um, she's really doing really good stuff lately. Um, God's Eye looks so confused by her promo, so which is always what we, we want to see. Um yeah, the, the, Mirai, it's good to see her finding something. She's really sinking her teeth into this feud with Tam. She she won the press conference. I think quite clearly came out of that press conference looking great. I was cutting these really, like... She's going to be so ass when she loses, I think man. she's winning. I feel like it's all building up to her winning. She should. She's cutting these great promos. I she's feel feeling like... it. She's found the soul. I think she's ready to, to go. Like, I am thinking, I am salivating at the idea of, like... Mirai being forced to kind of sink or swim in a bunch of singles matches. Because, like, if she swims, she'll be the best wrestler of the year, right? If she sinks, uh, give it to fucking Mike. I don't know. You know, like, it's it's not, like, just wait it out. Like, but that feels like it would be, like, yeah. movement, right? And I think that's kind of the issue with Tam right now is that, like, I feel so stagnant. And it's not just a Tam issue, it's just a stardom issue, is that everything feels so at a standstill. And it's like, when... Are things going to happen? Obviously, things are happening. The Queen's Quest stuff is happening. This, this, and that is happening. Whatever. But it's kind of a waiting for like the singles belts to like be visible yeah. <laughs> again. It, it, Thomas it, had I one defense with the red belt. Kind of like I thought. I thought of that the other day, and I was like, "That's crazy." Like she's had it for two months. Yeah, and we've had one. No, defense. yeah. I mean, I've been saying this, and she's not going to defend it again until yeah. at least for another month. Like, think about that. <laughs> and after that, it's the five star. She'll probably defend it once during the five star, if that. Uh, she might defend the white belt if she still has it. Like, I've I've said it a million times. This is the problem with not being able to put like the, the championships on Cork and shows. Okay, like, we shouldn't we shouldn't retread that it one. It just doesn't work. <laughs> we shouldn't retread that. Um, I know, I know, but it it's just it's harder when you don't have you know a bit more of a active thing to do. You know, you have one big show a month, and half the time Tam's in a tag match in it. Like, that's not going to work. Uh, either way, though, Mirai. Credit to Mirai. Uh, you, nope. yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, so, speaking of Tam, though, she was doing stuff. Um, she kind of seems to tease a match with Suzu Suzuki. Um, Suzu was like, hey, double double belt there, but... champ. Uh, I'm really interested by you. Uh, she seems to be setting up a match with Sayori Anu already. They were going at it. Uh, Anu was trying to choke the shit out of Natsupoi. Um, so Tam, Tam is kind of building to these matches that I assume will be red belt matches. Uh, I don't know about Suzu. I feel like I wouldn't want Suzu losing another title match already. Um, but she did very much clearly be like, Hey, I'm interested in you. I'm watching you. So they might run it soon. Um, and I mean, a lot of these could be five-star matches as well. Oh yeah. Maybe like possibly. The, the, yeah, you know. So, but she's setting. I mean, something half up. of them are gonna have to be. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, she's setting enough some stuff up though, which is is kind of what you want to to keep people interested. Um, and beyond that, yeah. she. Uh, the other thing. So Yuna Mizumori asked to be in Cosmic Angels, and Tam the other day was like, "I didn't actually say yeah." Um, just just so you know, like I didn't say yes. I didn't let you in. Um. So I think Yuna Mizumori was like, I'm going to lose weight, and I'm going to become the fiercest warrior in Cosmic Angels. And Tam was like, yeah, lose 10 kilos. Um, and, you know, people can feel how they want to feel about that. It's very tongue-in-cheek, because today she said to Suzu, she was like, oh, you've lost 8 kilos. Do you want to be in Cosmic Angels? So, sure. Uh, yeah, Tam, Tam. This is like the Hazuki thing, but way worse. I don't know. 
it's just that it's tongue in cheek. <laughs> I, I, f- I feel like her saying it to Suzu <laughs> made it go like, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I, I get it. But, like, I remember when this happened like a million times that people get very upset about fat shaming in stardom. I think it's dumb, personally. I think that fat shaming in stardom is like way overused as a trope. Uh, but I think people. If people don't like the person who's doing it, they're going to get upset. And if people like the person who's doing it, they aren't going to get as upset. Because, like, Nasuka's called people fat a lot, so is Mayu. Nobody gives a fuck. Julia or Tam does it. It's annoying, right? Um, you know, it's dumb. It's a dumb story. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, Yuna Mizumori is insane. And the way that it's kind of being presented is that it's like, Oh, I need to be beautiful to be in Cosmic Angel, so I'm going to lose weight. Is like, eh. But yeah, I think with the Suzu thing, it, it did kind of breathe a bit more. It it got some of the co- comedic aspects of it that got, get lost in translation. I think it kind of brought that out a bit more. So it's like, oh, it's just it's just kind of a dumb bit. Yeah. Right. Um. So you know, yeah. it's dumb, but. Yeah, yeah so that's what Tam has been up to. She's been at the, the heart of some stuff, man. Um, and that's that. really all that's happened over the last week. Like, everything else was just house show stuff, people getting pinned, my Sakurai getting on the promo every match, um, and really just the Tam stuff and the Queen's Quest away to tie stuff was the only notable progression of anything. Um, so hopefully this weekend, things kind of kick into high gear, because they do have two like, relatively... Interesting looking shows, I would say. Like, they're both at the Bell Salshia Dome, which is a big enough venue. They do treat that kind of venue relatively important. Um, so, like, the hope is that they, they do get it, get things going because the pay per view is the week after. And there's another pay per view, and you kind of need to keep us going here. Um, but I think we'll just preview these two. Uh, the first is on. The 17th of June, uh, it's at the Bell Sal Shia Dome, as I said. And in the opener, we have Miyu Amasaki and Hanako versus Hanan and Aya Sakura. Um, She's back, well, baby. yeah. After 10, 10 long days. Um, yeah, I don't know, I guess. She basically just didn't go on that tour. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> she just didn't go south, Incredible. that's it. Um, yeah, maybe Hanako's team wins, because, I mean, Aya... Um, I always lose those. Yeah. 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 I was, I was in the Very butt. much so. Uh, then we have... Hanako doesn't lose that much, which is kind of dope. It's I good. Dig it. um, we then have Tam Nakano and Yuna Mizumori versus Saya Kamatani and Suzu Suzuki. Uh, this could set up an, a, a little bit of stuff. I mean, Saya was eyeing up the white belt. Suzu was eyeing up both belts. Uh, I think you could see some interesting stuff coming out of this one. Maybe a bit of a preview. Is this the first Saya Suzu tag? I would say so, yeah. I don't this think the they've teamed for. before. Yeah, that's this the one we've been waiting yeah. for. Because this, this is interesting. Probably have to be waiting another month, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this match. This actually looks really good. Three or four of these people mm-hmm. I really, really like, and one of them is yeah. the champion. So. All right. Uh, we then have Siri, Mariah, and Ami Sore against Julia, Micah, and Mai Sakurai. That's going to be an interesting one. Uh, that might go to a draw. I don't know. You know, Ami's been That's dropping. That's true. Some They're balls. tired of her now. That that was that was one thing, that was one thing we didn't mention in the uh, review because we couldn't. Uh, I believe it was STC, the stars top tiers. They beat Ami. Um, I forget who. I think they just did like a bunch yeah. of double team moves and then beat her. But yeah, they beat the the top gods I trio, which doesn't really happen very frequently. So they're kind of they have a. They have Jags in the armor, so uh, DDM could win, <laughs> but they're not going to. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be an interesting... <laughs> I don't really know who loses of any of these six, really. I guess. My yeah, Saga if it was like Jams Julia, is... Tekla, and Mai, I could see them losing, but Micah, instead of Tekla, it kind of makes you go, hmm, maybe maybe the DDM team is too good. Yeah, Micah, Micah ain't yeah. been losing. So I, I think that could be an interesting one. If it doesn't go to a draw, then it could just be another power win for Micah. Or God's Eye could uh, could kind of shock people and, and maybe challenge for the belts down the line. Who knows? Um, match after that then is Mina Shirakawa, Waka Skiyama, and Mariah May 
Hanzina against Natsuko Tora, Momo Watanabe, uh, Raka, and Rina. So, yeah, I mean, who who knows? Sure, why not? Well, xena has been losing every match, so sure. probably Xena losing. Yes, but but it's 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 yeah. Raka and Rina. Like Raka could take the L to me or, or something. It's Xena. I don't know. It it depends because Xena is Xena is de yes. dipping, right? Uh, She's finished after the Siri match. I can do that. A much maligned Siri match. <laughs> I, need, I need I need to get the I need to get the roster chart out soon because I want Xena on that. <laughs> well, if you include her, you have to include Zaya. That's I my think girl. that's the only. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Anybody who's active okay. today, that's right. it. That, that's that's actually a little little side door. That's how I'm like getting around having to add like every single independent worker <laughs> is that i'm just like everybody who's worked like non-new blood since like like i'm, I'm being real specific about it because it, it would be yeah. so hard to count every single wrestler who competes on one of these shows uh but Zena's around so all right that's yeah, cool so. um the match after that then is mayu Uitani, hazuki and saida versus utami hashishta lady c and hina so yeah that doesn't even seem fair stars are gonna win <laughs> wait is that saida yeah. you said Huge man, huge! Another win, another W. I was so I was so excited when I saw she beat Waka. I was so concerned. Um, <laughs> it was like that was when we were gonna have to have a conversation. <laughs> not as valid, yeah. But we we still up, we still up. We we not losing every match. Woo Let's go. Shout out. Uh, the main event then, or the presumed main event, is a high speed rumble. It's Azumi, Koguma, Momokogo, Natsupoi, Starlight Kid, Saki Kashima, Fuki Gendeth, Tekla, and May Sarah. Um, I don't know. I don't really think there's a a need for like a clear winner. Like you can just have Azumi win, Saki could win, Koguma could do some stuff. Like this is one of those matches where it almost doesn't matter because I doubt they're setting anything up. Like May Sarah has already challenged Saki, so you already have an next challenger. I could see like I could see like Momo Kogo winning uh, and challenging. I don't know. Down the because I mean May Sarah is already like. The next in line, so I don't know if you need another next in line. She's the next champion, but she's the yeah, next but she's champion. already challenged Saki, and she, but Sak Saki said no, so she's gonna have to challenge her again. <laughs> I guess, but she can just do that at the like pay per view. That's how that's how this works. That's how this I don't works. Know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you know, Azumi actually got called the high speed champion uh, on one of these shows, and she's like, "I'm not that no more." Yeah. But I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next show that's preview is um, also in the Bell Cell Shia Dome. Uh, the opening match is Mina Shirakawa and Zena versus Natsuko Tora and Momo Anabe. Uh, well, that's another way to tie win. Um, we then have Utami Hashishita, Sai Kamatani, and Azumi versus Siri, Mirai, and Ami Sore. I imagine that'll go to a draw. Ooh. I can't really see them yeah. doing a, another Queen's Quest loss. I can't see them pinning in yeah three, really. unless it was like siri over utami but i think that would be going a bit too far that, that's a bit on the nose yeah. <laughs> yeah i think so um it's probably a draw um then we have suzu suzuki versus starlight kid just because um i don't know like i could see kid winning because they, they might want to keep her going and then suzu can win in a gp or something do you think kids losing the passion injection match? This is off topic, but like, no. Like, where is kid right now? That's a good question. You know what I mean? I think she's protected enough like, that they won't. She might be the, like the first person to win one of those, but I don't, I don't know. I can even see a draw with with the passion injection. Yeah. That's that's next month, so I'm sorry, everybody. We're it's all right. Off I got kind of got off topic, but like, I am interested in kind of seeing where they position her against Suzu. Yeah. Because Suzu can easily win that. But it also could be. They can't do two draws. No, I, this I mean, feels like the they, they, they both have you know they I mean? both have roll ups, and they both like kid can just cheat. Like you can do stuff to to get around it, and then have one of them get their win back in the GP. I think it's fairly simple. Yeah, I mean, whoever whoever loses is gonna get their win back, and if neither of them lose, then they're gonna do a rematch in the five star. Yeah. Uh, I imagine so. Doesn't really matter, but it'll be interesting to see if this is any good. You know, their uh, match last year was fun. Yeah, 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 it was actually. Yeah, that was like my favorite kid match of the GP, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So, that was really I, I think I think uh, it's promising. Um, 
The match after that then is Julia and Micah versus Mayu Iwatani and Hazuki versus Tam Nakano and Natsupoi. Star studded. Um, the fuck is this? I mean, man? <laughs> what do we do Natsupoi here? Natsupoi is like the clear could lose but, winner yeah. or could lose person. Um, or if they want, they could have Julia and Micah fuck up if they want to progress whatever Micah is doing and give them a, a reason to split. Then you could have them lose. I think, but I don't really know. I think we might see Angel Killer. I think yeah. Mike over Natsupoi. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm here for That's it. The way it goes, brother. Um. Yeah, Micah. Micah actually teased, and this is like a little funny thing from this past week's show. Is she beat Zeno once, but she beat her with the Enka attack. Um, so she didn't even kill her. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. And then the next day, she's like, I got you, Dylan. And she got the mission. I love it. I, I was like, yeah. Love it. Continuity, <laughs> brother. Um, like the only person that she has is Zaya. It's Zaya, Brookside, Mariah May, and uh, Sarianu. Only motherfuckers who she has not beaten. Right, okay. In both factions. Crazy. That is crazy. Zaya doesn't count. Um, so the, the real kind of important match of this weekend is the five star GP Rumble. Uh, we will see the last mm-hmm. two um participants in the tournament decided we have koguma momokogo saida hanan hina miyu amasaki lady c mai sakurai tekla fukigen baraka rina wakaskiyama mariah may yuna mizumori may sarah hanako and aya sakura all competing for two spots in the gp i think one is nailed on to be hanan there's not a chance she's if not it's in. not, that's going to be like, fucked. Like, because cause they, they like to, to fuck with her a little bit. I remember she came out with the new gear, with the new hair, with the new nickname, new theme, new everything, and then got eliminated in like a minute and a half in one of those mm-hmm. big rumbles from recently. So if they just want to like fuck with her, I would be very upset because she should be in this year, but I could see them just big swerve. Uh, She should be in it. She's She's like, she's the one. Yeah. Um, the other spot is a real like three person shootout really I mean I, I feel like Tekla could be it Mariah May or May Sarah um, yeah, like, yeah no, it's, it's yeah like system. with two of them you have a flash pin and they're obviously going to want people to do upsets in, in the blocks so you kind of need one of those um, but it's like Mariah May just feels like yeah like Mariah could be one of those like, like would have a standout be. tournament kind of thing and would do really well in it and offer fresh matches which is really fun. what you want they might not want to pin her that yeah. much because she would be she would she wouldn't break even uh considering the i don't know i mean had she, she been, might has she lost? Cool, i would cool with it like has she herself lost that's what i mean is because you like, can have her go half maybe like, you can have her go half She's been pinned before, but like at once, yeah. maybe twice. Like it's not a thing that happens. Um, cause, but that's what I mean is that it's like either they have to continue protecting her or they have to stop protecting her. That's the issue with the five star when it comes to like newer people. Okay, like but um, when like they do some weird shit with new people in the GP, like didn't Unagi and her first one get like twelve points, and then Ami Sore last year got loads of points. Like when you're in your first GP yes. and you're protected, they do tend to give you a lot more wins than people would expect. So, but that might be Hanan's spot. Like I don't know if you want two of those. You know, like that could be where Hanan slots That's in. That's what I mean. And then Mariah May would be like a second person doing the exact same story. So I could see that working against Mariah, um, which is why I'm leaning more towards Tekla or May Sarah. With May, they might want to keep her out too if she's building up to the high speed belt. Whereas Tekla is Teflon basically. And you can pin her and she can pin whoever. So maybe I'm leaning Tekla. Yeah, and Tekla didn't get Yeah, it last like year. she was kinda I would I would really like if May Sarah was in it, but like I don't know. I don't know. It's it's Hanan, and I'm I think I'm leaning Tekla yeah. and May Sarah. I don't I don't know if they want Mariah May in there. Um, With I think if Mariah May wasn't in it, that might free her up to do. I don't know if they wanted to send her to America for something. You know, if they're still doing that, like if she's still, if they're if they're involved <laughs> with this, you know, New Japan Strong Women's Belt, or if she beats Mayu, God forbid, or whatever. You could free her up to to do stuff if that's what they wanted. 
See, it's it's really funny because everybody loves Mayu so much that it's like we both adore Mariah May. Yes. But that yeah. Is a gap yeah. Moment. You know what I mean? It's like I you went can't, to bat. You can't we beat the we went to bat for Mariah May. Some dude was like, "Oh, who'd want to see Mayu versus Mariah May over Mayu versus Ruby Soho?" And I was like, "Me." <laughs> yeah. People who have seen Me. Mariah May. Mariah wrestle, May like... rocks. <laughs> Shut your face. So yeah, we we yeah, like Mariah, great. but uh, I mean Mayu is Mayu, obviously. So I don't know. I feel like. Um, Hanan and Tekla are the two I'm settling on. Um, but, I mean, there's so many viable candidates. Like, Koguma could get in. Miyu Amasaki could get in. My Sakurai could get in. Yeah, I, I feel like... I don't think it's likely. Like, my Sakurai was in already, and they had her lose, like, all but two matches or something. I don't think they're, they'd be bothered doing it again. She that too. Bad, that you... Wait, no, she you know, didn't... She did didn't she get loads? Two. She... She won. Oh, she shit, won Texas yeah, okay. once. Yeah, so she won a decent amount. It was bad. She she what? had the worst tournament of basically anybody, um, uh, especially because her block was a bit weaker. Ami Sori probably would have had a weaker tournament if mm-hmm. she didn't have so many good wrestlers to wrestle against. Um, but yeah, yeah don't no. don't put Maya um, again. Uh, she's good and she's good in small doses, true. but not like this. Uh, I Koguma is like definitely a no go because I feel like Koguma is no. just in peak. Like I don't care. I'm doing comedy mode. Yeah, and that's cool, because, like, she had, like, a year and a half, two years of just insane wrestling, and she's still a great tag wrestler, so she doesn't really need to, you know, she's got she's got the winning record over Sherry, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> that's all she needs. Um, yeah, I, anybody could really win this. I feel like I'm leaning May Sarah Hanan, though. Okay, interesting. I, I feel like, I feel like May Sarah being in it would open up so many avenues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, they don't have enough upsiders, they don't have enough spoilers, and I would also just really like to see May Sarah get those reps. That is fair. You know, just, just you know, completely honest. Like, uh, we've we've been a bit critical of her, but I think if she just got a few like some singles matches against like high level wrestlers, I think she could really bring out what she uh, displayed in Marvelous a lot. Mm-hmm. With that being the underdog against these bigger wrestlers, instead of just being kind of put into the high speed, uh, you know, being shoehorned into that and just being stuck there. The five star could really let her show up and display her high speed stuff against non high speed wrestlers, and I think that might be where she uh, would thrive a bit more. Possibly, so yeah. That, that's what that's what I'm kind of. I I would prefer, I would say May Sarah and. Hunt. All right. Okay. I mean, it's a good problem to have that you're going to be leaving out talented wrestlers no matter what. I mean. I thought this was an interesting thing. I think Naito himself was complaining about the G1, where he was like, this is meant to be... I don't blame him. He, he was like, this is meant to be the best of the best in New Japan. And yet we have 32 people, and some of them are not the best. Whereas, and I think that made me appreciate this five-star a lot more, where I was like, I mean, yeah, people are going to miss out, but this is like the best of the best. You know, Stardom has 18 yeah. people already. And there are 17 great wrestlers in there. And Amisore, and they're gonna likely add. Who can who show can, up? She's can, capable of having a good match. And they're gonna add likely two more great wrestlers from this match. Yeah. So I, I feel like, yeah, that it's hard to really miss. It, it is. It is. On, in this. So in this GP, in this uh. I think the event. G1 really made me go. You know, the GP isn't so bad. Because <laughs> um, yeah, people are gonna miss out, you know, but it's... it's better than a 32-person field where a lot of it is just but... not fun. I think my struggle is is that the GP has been used to really show up for a lot of wrestlers. Like Mina Shirakawa would not be a white belt champion ever if she didn't have that good of a five star run last year. Yeah, like just straight up, she wouldn't be on any posters ever again. Like she's on the poster for this Shio Dumb show. She wouldn't be there if she didn't have that star make. Not I don't want to say star making. She's already you know very popular, but like that insane run last year, she wouldn't have been in it. You know what I mean? If if we were being uh, a bit more condensed. That's where the, the bigger issue I have is. And I actually talked to somebody on Twitter about this because somebody because I said, oh yeah, the G1 is super bloated. Um, and this was before the blocks came out. The blocks came out. It's even worse yes. than I expected because um, there's no good block. Like the best block is just eight people who have wrestled oh, each D other block? a million times, but they're all consistent. What is it's the one yeah, with Naito and yeah. Zach in it? You know what I mean? God forbid yeah, Tanahashi. It's like, it's like yeah, all these all these guys are yeah, fine. God, God forbid Tanahashi <laughs> goes a tournament without wrestling Zach. <laughs> like, yeah, like like. Oh God. It, what I mean is that it's like all of them are like consistently 
good. Like none of them are like god. They don't have a Chase Owens in there. You know, they don't have like a Aaron Hanari in there. But it's like you've seen all of those matches multiple yeah. times. Um, that's the G one issue. That's not even what I'm talking about. But really, like I I was talking to someone. And I was like, I think the difference is that like <laughs> New Japan doesn't have the capacity for that. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, clearly. Like and Naito agrees with when you. you have you Naito know, himself. With yeah, the, when you agrees. have 15, when you have fifteen good wrestlers and then maybe five that could have a standout performance, that's twenty. You don't need the extra twelve. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, but with Stardom, you have thirty great wrestlers and maybe like four or five. Eh, you know what I mean? And one of them is the rookie who yeah. just showed up. Um, like. I think that's the difference, but at the same time, I get what you mean. It's just, I- I'm still a bit like, oh man, like, you know, Ida can't have a star making performance. Not saying that she necessarily would, but, you know, Ida can't do that. Uh, Tekla, if she's not in it, she can't do that. You know, one, Tekla or Mariah May are not going to be in it, so they can't have that performance that well, can send them. Well, we're to saying that, but we're also level. thinking Hanan is going to be in to do that. So maybe they're just making a concerted effort for Hanan to be the one. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, po- but that that begs the question, like, that's a control thing, right? The company controls who does that. Yeah. If somebody, like, I don't think I don't think Mina was meant to be the star of the five star last year. Like, she was obviously meant to have like good matches, have good upsets, you know, win some good matches. But she lost to Hana. Yeah. Like, let's let's be real. Like, she lost to the, the like the only person who didn't get any points other than Unagi. But that's a different story. Like. That, that's what I mean is that's like yeah Hanan we are projecting her to have that run because we know she can and we know that the company realistically wants mm-hmm. her to but I'm talking about people who the company doesn't necessarily need to have great performances having great performances that's just a little it doesn't matter it'll yeah. be a good tournament I'm just complaining mm-hmm. complain. it's just a thing all right do. well um that's the five star very interested to see who the last two people are and then uh, hopefully we get the lineup soon, the the blocks, because uh, it's going to tell us a lot about how things are going to go down. And obviously we get to salivate over the matches we're going to get at that point. Um, I don't know if they're going to announce. Like, would it be viable to announce the blocks right after the G, the the rumble, or would they hold that off maybe for one of the pay per views? I'd imagine they hold it off for the uh, for twenty five. Oh yeah, possibly. Yeah, that would make sense, I guess. It'll probably be like the it'll probably be the big announcement because they always have an announcement. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Match. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's pretty much everything we have. So, um, if planning ahead, I was like, "Hey, we're gonna need more content." So we asked in our Discord, and then Dylan took to Twitter um, to ask for questions. We're gonna do a bit of a Q and A with a twist. Uh, this time it is retro Joshi. Uh, Dylan and I are big fans of older Joshi. You know, we did a podcast on AJW briefly and JWP and the women in FMW. Uh, it died before we got to LLPW, but nevertheless. Um, but we we're fans of that era, so we kind of. It sucks because we had we had the LLPW shows in our grasp. Yes, I literally like own we, LLPW we had... shows. Like <laughs> they were there. Yeah, like we. Um... Oh man. And like like match like shows that like aren't readily available. I like one of my buds like sent them to me, and I was like, oh my god, and yeah. nothing. I, I was talking to Xavier. I was trying to get us to do on no limit. None of them are long enough. Like they're all like an hour long. And I'm just like, that's not gonna, you know, it's gonna be a half. I don't know. I feel like you guys could go like forty minutes on Condori alone. I won't lie to you. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we asked for some questions, mostly about older Joshi. So you know, if you want to hear something cool about wrestlers you don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so the first question uh, that we got was best matches, best matches from Argion. Um, so I feel like this one is a rite of passage match, but LCO versus Akino and Hamada is like the one. Like that's the yeah, one that's everybody who is anybody in Joshi in the Joshi fandom will tell you about that match. LCO brutalized these two women who put in the most amazing underdog performance ever. Um, if you've never watched Prime Aquino, watch her now. She's amazing. Hamada was also fantastic. Yeah. LCO were in their bag. Um, fantastic match. Me and Zavi, me and Zavi were just talking about this match because he was like, like we, because we're doing Arjun soon. Um, for the next episode of that show, 
Uh, and he was just like, yeah, I mean, Arjun, like, he's like, I don't know a ton, but I do remember they had, like, the best tag yeah. team match ever. And I was like, are you talking about the same match I'm talking about? Because, like, you're right. Like, top two ma- like top two tag team matches maybe ever um, in wrestling, period. Not just in women's wrestling, not just in Japan. Like, just w- one of the best yeah. tag team matches you'll ever see, in my opinion. That's definitely the one. Um, there, there were there were some good ones. I mean, Mariko Yoshida did some good stuff. Uh, especially, I forget if it was uh mariko or if it was hamada who had a really great match with kong before kong left it um, was i think it was hamada because I, I, I think hamada playing. like took the took yeah. the reins yeah. from aja like firmly so yeah i think it was Aja. Yeah, yeah 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 it was that match it was that match yeah um hamada hamada and aja was really good um honestly a lot of the sky stuff like the sky high uh yeah. there was a sky high tournament sky high league that the Apaches were in, I believe. Akina was in, obviously. That was a really good just division. Like that was like a precursor to the high speed division that Neo and now Stardom use. And it was just really fucking good. They got some really great uh luchadoras over there. There's a lot from Arjun you can check out that is really good. But I the tag team matches the Yeah, one I would also say like Aja and Hamada. Um Aja and Mich- Michiko Omakai. I loved Omakai. She would just like randomly throw like hook kicks to mm. people's face and i was like all right let's go um <laughs> this is one that i i'm not a fan of but i could see the other people enjoying uh mariko yoshida versus megumi fuji uh that could tickle the fancy of some people because arjian it's an mma I rules match that. so like af- after a certain mm, i know what thing, you're talking about, i've like, never so. loved arjian because it was very technical like almost every match was very technical even yeah. as are Kong maps. They were like, we're gonna grapple. That that was the that was the entire it's, like vision yeah. was that it's like hyper visual fighting. Arjun was the name uh, for a reason. But yeah, so I you know your your mileage may vary because yeah, a lot of it is very technical. Um, but the matches we outlined are are some of the better ones. Um, I think uh, Hiromi Yagi and Mariko Yoshida would be like the last you have to watch that kind of match. Um, but other than that, it is definitely a you know, you kind of have to find what you like in Arjun and kind of stick to that because, yeah, some of it is a little bit too rounded, um, but they did have their occasional bouts of violence. Yeah, it's really interesting because Arjun is, like, cut into three yes. different yeah. eras very clearly. Um, it was pre- it was Aja Kong. That era was super mm-hmm. technical. Su- like, very heavy on the technical. Post-Aja Kong... They brought in some of the um, mm-hmm. the AJW girls, and they brought in, you know, uh, and they kind of like focused on being a, another AJW. I think, think Lioness like, Asuka Rossi kind of was just like, oh well, I I'll just do what I get over from him. Yeah, it was it was it was Rossi and it was Rossi and and Asuka, and then I think it was just Asuka, and then that failed, so they gave it to Hoda, who I haven't seen a lot of A to Z, but she booked Natalia at yeah. one point. <laughs> That's what I do remember from A to Z, and you know, it was just it, it started dying down from there. But yeah, those are the three eras. Um, I do like that kind of like right around when Aja left, when it was kind of uh, not as like firm on the technical stuff. It still had a great great technical wrestling, but it was kind of like mm-hmm. evolving. But before it kind of just fell uh, and <laughs> fell from grace when Linus Asuka and Rossi kind of just transformed into something else uh so the next question then is this is for comedy question for dylan what classic joshi wrestlers let's say three or so would you choose to beat the brakes off of hayata to save the noah jr division and i replied i bet i know his three already see i don't even know my three that's the beauty because like i was just thinking okay who and it's funny because at first i was like oh i just grabbed bat yoshinaga but they did say to save the Noah Jr. division. I don't think Yoshinaga would be in I think they were just saving it by so... killing him. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. I was going to. I guessed that your that three was going to be like Dynamite Kanzai, Akira Hokuto, and like either Aja Kong or like Yasha Kurodai or something. I thought that would be the three. Oh, I was thinking Ooh, Hoda. Yeah, I don't know. Hoda. I was thinking Hoda. Ho- yeah. Honestly. 
it's it's interesting because because I'm all like I'm looking at this as a as a funny thing because I'm just like oh well who could who could murder Hayato most of them but I'm also looking at it as like a little bit more realistic who would I like to have in like intergender matches to make wrestling better <laughs> and I'm just like I would I would buy a Hoda Ada match you know what I mean that would be fun okay. as long as Stinger's far away you know if if Hoda if Hoda just killed. Hayata and took his spot and won the Noah Jr. belt. I'm rocking with it. Yeah, I, I would say Hoda. I would say Hoda Hokuto and um, maybe Dynamite. Yeah. Dynamite would probably be fun. Yes, Dynamite we love Dynamite. Um, now, a more simple question. Yeah. What are some of your favorite matches from your favorites from that era? Uh, for Alex specifically, what are some of your favorite Azure Kong matches? How long have you got? Um, so I'm going to try and spread these. <laughs> Because, I mean, Aja, the, the best to ever do it. So one of them, and I don't think people talk about this one at all, it's Aja Kong, Combat Toyota, and Kuga versus Bison Kimura, Kaoru, and Megumi Kuda. Oh, yeah, yeah, This yeah. is one of the craziest... 86ers. Yeah, this is one of the craziest trios matches I have ever seen. It happened in 1996 at a Wrestling Queendom. It went crazy. I'm sure I recall Aja like, did a move off the top rope. Like she did a dive of some sort <laughs> in this match. It was crazy. Uh, her and Combat Toyota teaming is fantastic. Kuga was great. Uh, Kyoru obviously is fantastic. You love Megumi Kudo. And Bison Kimura was there. Yeah. And we both love Bison Kimura. So that is the first one. Um, and that was like, not not to interrupt, right. but like that was, I think a big part of that is that like there's just so much trust amongst classmates. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like they all train together for you know, a year at least in the dojo. So Aja Kong, if she's going to ju jump off the top rope against somebody, it's going to be against a Bison Kimura, right? Because they were close personal friends and they, you know, started wrestling together. So those sorts of matches are really dope because there is a lot of trust there and you can kind of see that. Um, but yeah, go, go on. Um, another one, and this is, an, this is a pretty obvious one, Aja versus Dynamite Kanzai. Um, 95. I think it's yes. one of the most amazing yes. matches I've ever seen. Uh, just violence incarnate. Was that in 95? I think so, yeah. I think it was, was it Legacy? Was not Legacy cool. of Queens? Yeah, that yes. was 95, I thought. I'm looking that up. Because that's, that's wild how long uh, that was, they were. Yeah, because I think it was like they did a random Azure title reign there and then dropped it back to Toyota because she had the match in 95 with Hokuto for the belt. So I think it was 95. There, okay, there there was one in 93 and I think there was another one in 95. Yeah. So um, either of those matches between Azure and Dynamite, Both pretty great. Very good, yeah. um, another one is uh, we've watched this uh, Jungle Jack versus Bull Nakano and Grizzly Iwamoto. Incredible. Yeah. Um, Jungle Jack versus Esther Moreno and Minami Toyota. We watch mm. that, that's that's that match. That's mm -hmm. that match that like we always mm -hmm. just go back to and are just like hey, remember Esther that shit? Moreno <laughs> is one of the greatest lucha wrestlers I've ever had the pleasure of seeing. She was fantastic yeah. in that match with Jungle Jack. Um, I think Aja Kong versus Bull Nakano from '93, where Aja finally wins the belt off of her, is a pretty historic match to watch as well. You can't really. That was late. 92. Was it really? Oh, sorry then. Late ninety two. Yeah. Um, but you can't really go wrong with any of the Azure Kong versus Bull Nakano matches. They had some of the most violent cage matches you'll ever see. Except for the one. Except with, for with that Gato one. But I think I like nobody that. really has ever seen that one, so I don't think it counts. That that was a you know that was a yeah. that was a fan cam uh or that was like a you know it wasn't released like yeah on TV, uh, but we watched it like suckers. <laughs> Um, oh, <laughs> so yeah, any of the Azure Bull matches from, from that era, uh, Jungle Jack versus Esther and Toyota, Jungle Jack versus Grizzly and Bull, which was fantastic. And then yeah, Azure and Dynamite Kanzai and the six woman tag. Uh, I have obviously loads more, but I think those are like the big ones to hit on from, from kind of her AJW days. Um, cause obviously everybody knows the matches with Manami Toyota and stuff like that. Um, yeah, those would be the ones I would go with. Um. It's it's funny because I'm not like, and I've said this many times. Aja and Toyota, I I was never crazy about. See, them as they got better. Um, 
I, I thought that they both had like have you well, yeah have for you sure. seen the like, one from like definitely. 96 i think where azure has the silver gear or is it the green gear like they had two matches around that time and they were I've crazy seen the... yes uh i've seen i haven't seen like i haven't seen one or two of them but i've seen the one with the green gear and then i saw the last oh, yeah. one right before the exodus that was not good um this with 30 yeah. it was just completely vapid um but no i do remember the one i remember one of the ones that you're talking about was really good but i just overall like i, I thought aja and, and hokuto had a lot more fun matches especially back earlier uh when hokuto was still going at <laughs> yeah you know crazy pace um but yeah who's I, your favorite me, then because it's 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 your favorite i don't fucking know it's very hard because like I Kudo isn't my favorite, but she's probably the easiest to like yeah. pick from. Cause then like cause I've cause I've seen all of her big matches. You could go with had, Hota either. Like you were really big <laughs> you know what Hota. I mean? I was, could, I, there's I, some I, like I, cool stuff to recommend um, there, like the fire jets stuff, like Oh yeah, one percent you know what I, I am gonna go with Hoda. I think Hoda the the thing with Hoda was I think Fire Jets, which was her and uh, Nishiwake, not enough of that stuff made air, but if you could ever find her and Nishiwake against um, the Marine Wolves, which is uh, Hokuto and Suzuka Minami, one of, again, one of the best tag team matches. Like, just, there is, Hoda's selling in that. I, I still remember, she just got beat the fuck out of, right? To the point where, when she got uh, tossed to the ropes, she, like, tripped and like just like stumbled her way trying to like attack like it it was so like realistically selling running like getting rebounded off the ropes and i was like that's so cool like how do you make it look like it hurts when you are bouncing off the ropes while still making it a fluid motion and that was one spot of like 70 in that match that were really really great um what's what's the one i'm thinking of uh hoda a lot of that early stuff was really great, but also I think like Hoda and uh, Mikawa did some good stuff. I, I forget if it was their singles matches or their tag matches. I think what the fuck was my my I'm not good at these sorts of things because I just I'm so all over the place. But it, basically anything from Mika Hoda um, that also included Kamika Mikawa. Oh, Mikawa was, really was so good. Uh, especially I love Mikawa. Especially considering that era wasn't that great, you know, like that era had a lot of downsides, but like those two together pretty much always was really, really fun as long as they weren't going, you know, 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, and I think her match against Kong was mm -hmm. also very good, but it was definitely like she got her ass beat and didn't get, you know, like if you want to see like a more like, you know, fierce battle of like a titans it's time i can sign aja kong but if you want to see someone get their ass beat in like a real underdog performance it's that match against uh hoda yeah. and aja kong for me um but yeah i think i think she thrived in tag stuff she thrived in single stuff she got a surprisingly good match out of combat toyota at the dome which i don't think a lot of people recognize because that dome match show was like a lot and it wasn't that great of a match but i thought that was a fun match um crazy that she mm -hmm. lost that um <laughs> Yeah, there, there's yeah, a lot Hoda, of good stuff. Hoda had some good stuff. Her and Shinobu Kandori had three matches together, and all three are just ridiculous. I don't know how I haven't seen it. Really? Of one of them I was in like '93. Are you definitely? Wait, seen no, no, no. I've yeah. seen, I've seen one of them. I've seen one. The, of them. the two one. after oh. were in like '97, '98 for the the two belts, yeah, I, and they just like yeah, beat not. the shit out of each other. It was great. So yeah, I do uh, remember that happening. But, yeah. The matches uh, Hoda had with Kandori were definitely awesome. Um. Next question then is dream match between a Joshi legend and modern talent. Like if you could stick Utami or whoever into a time machine, who would you want to see them against? Um, I wouldn't have picked her, but just speaking of Utami, her and Devil Masami would be the best shit. I would love I that. Can see that. Um, my choice of of uh, who would I send back? Um, hmm. that's that's interesting. I think. Oh, I I, I think I, I have, have one. Pick. I have a pick. Um. Mio Momono against Dynamite Kanzai. I need it. Like, with all of my being. I hate I hate that you went first, because I was going to do a bit. <laughs> um, I was going to say Mio Momono and Mio, Mayumi Ozaki, oh, obviously. Who doesn't oh, want to see that match? No, um, 
I'm kidding. Actually, I think I think Momono against Pro, like Pride oh, yeah, yeah. would be pretty, pretty Cruiserweight Ozaki was crazy. Um, yeah, Cruiserweight Ozaki was insane. Like just uh, Goblin Ozaki, as I call it. Great stuff. Um, no, there's there's so many great wrestlers now and back yeah. then that's like here's here's a here's a very off the okay. wall one. Uh Hazuki Oh Harley my Sado. god. Yes. Like just like for no reason. There's no like th- that's not the first thing that comes to anybody's mind, but it should cuz it would be the greatest yeah. match you will ever no, see. Yeah. Harley was uh, Harley rocks. Two two of the two of the most underrated competitors of their eras. Um Hazuki's obviously getting love and she, everybody knows that she's great, a consistency machine. But like, you know, I, I think that's that's one match that you won't necessarily think of immediately, but that's a match that would be great. Um, it, it'd be fun, and this is like, and again, I'm kind of going like kind of kind of crazy here, like Crush Gals versus Mahime, or against pretty much any good tag team, Aphrodite. Black Desire. You know, like any good tag team from nowadays would be. Oh no, Black team Desire would be KG. Fun. I think yeah. And the Crush Gals. That would be. Yes. Yeah. Chef's yeah, kiss. That, that's perfect. Um. I like to see like Toshio Yamada against some of them, some of the modern talents like Toshio and and Takumi would obviously be like absurd. I feel like Cause Yamada was going crazy. Like you know that. Let me let me pose this to you. Who do you think Venny? Who's her best matchup all time? Like who do you think? I feel would be like her, best her and Toyota her? would mix really well. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Toyota, yeah, I think they would, would mix. Be, yeah, um, it's not that. 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 Her dickheadishness would fuck with Shinobu Kandori like nobody's business. I think she would she would get in Kandori's mm. face. You know what's funny is the other day um, I watched Kagetsu yeah. versus Shinobu Kandori that happened on like a what was it, a JWP show from like 2010. It was terrible. Uh, Kandori just beat yeah. the fuck out of him. And like it was like it was like four minutes long, and I was just like, "Damn, that's rough." <laughs> like I was like, "Oh, that's a crazy matchup." And like it, I forgot how how little respect uh, Rookie Kagetsu got. So yeah, that was really funny. Even post Rookie Kagetsu just got his yeah. ass beat a lot. Um, but yeah, there's probably like one or two more that like you could really like pinpoint. But um, I'm kind of trying to think of like like Kohaku versus. Um, mm. Kaku versus like Dynamite and Sai. Kaku could just run circles around yeah. her and just get her ass beat. Like something like that would be fun. Like there, there, you could pair up like a good wrestler from now to a good wrestler from back then. And if their styles mix, I think that like pretty much yeah. would be. Yeah, and I mean you could yeah like there's a lot of depth to it as well. Like you could get the uh, Saki Hasegawa's and Takako Inoue's involved as well. Like I feel like mm-hmm. um, you know Maria and Mio against Saki Hasegawa and Takako or something have been great because the, the the you know those AJW underlings in like ninety two were working a really fast pace of tag match like they could keep up with with the Mios and Marias. Oh wait, there's one that like I've thought about like a million times. Uh, Kudo Yamashita, death, death match. That's that's yeah. Uh, Why not? Yeah, that'd be really fun. Uh, I know I know you're not you're not a big fan of of. I, I always accuse you. That's the great thing. Neither of these things are like fully true, but you know, you've you've made uh, passing remarks. Not not too crazy about Kudo. Um, and don't you prefer Rena's like non deathmatch stuff? Yeah. I forget. Yeah. See, so like that's a match made in hell for you uh, of two wrestlers that are really really good that you don't mind. Um, but yeah, that that's a match that I would really like. Uh, All right. Or even against like even Rena against like Shark. Like I feel like that could just. I be think the most we could keep going. I think we could keep I going, but yeah, I think our our original picks were probably the yeah. best ones. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of like shoot, you know. Yeah, I mean we could go forever. Um, <laughs> now let's see. Uh, one for Dylan. Uh, who would win in a match between the Golden Pair and my Um, you're you're a big expert there on the Golden Pair. Um. Depends on who's booking it, <laughs> you know. What I mean, uh, probably my Hime, because even even after their like push, they were still like even after title reign, they were still like protected to some degree, so some small degree. Uh, the golden pair just wasn't like once they lost the belts, it's like okay, who's the next pair that we like? Um, yeah. So it was very instantaneous. So like if we're talking 
championship reign versus championship reign. If they're both champions, who's winning? It's probably Golden Pair because obviously Mahime was not respected as champions like whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. But if we're just talking like overall, Golden Pair immediately the second that they lost the belts, pretty much they were just like tossed aside. So I would probably say Mahime. Valid. Okay. Um, how do I get into two thousands Joshi wrestling? Um, you know, there's a lot more of that out there than I think people think. It's just about finding it. You know, I think not, not to not to send this off. Uh, talk to widescreen. He he has like yes widescreen. Of, of, like he he just randomly sends me stuff, and I'll sometimes I'll watch it, sometimes I won't because I just don't have like the time at that moment. Mm -hmm. But I'll watch it. I'll be like, this is fucking insane. <laughs> like, cause and it makes you be like, damn, I really should watch more of this year. Yeah, like, a lot of it's really good. So yeah, I I would say talk to widescreen personally. <laughs> uh, sending all of the everybody him his way. But, the actual uh, advice. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um I think the best thing is just find a wrestler or a company that you're interested in, mm. and like search from there. Because if you want to like look up all of Kana's stuff, you can find it. Like it's there. You just have to search for it. It might not all be on YouTube, but it's all out there. Um. Archive is a great place to look for stuff. Yeah. So I like if you're if you have a specific wrestler that you're really interested in, I think you just dig into them and through that you'll find other favorites. Like through watching Kana, I, I came across Chihiro Aikawa and I thought she was great. Her matches with Kana were great. And through Kana I came across Ayumi Kurahara, who was also great. And you can do that on the other end with, you know, the early two thousands, you might be a big tiny mouse fan or you might love old woman Toshio Yamada and Gaia. And Gaia uploads a lot of stuff to YouTube, so they are they are pretty good for it. But yeah, I think the best thing is just find a wrestler or a company to focus on and just look for their stuff because you can find it. You just kind of have to be a bit more direct with your searches than kind of are used to. But it is all out there because archivists back then were using Noodle Magazine. If you've ever watched an old Joshi match, you have come across <laughs> Noodle Magazine. Um so yeah just it's such a crazy thing that exists. it is so just like focus on one thing and through that you will find favorites that you want to, to branch off to i think that's the best way that's how i did it anyway i just was like hey kana is cool and then watched kana kana's kind of a bad example because most of her best stuff was in like the 2010s but you know what i mean she had some cool stuff in the, the late 2000s as well no, but i think i think that's how you kind of how you go into that uh just going back in general because i mean i look at it I bought a Cutie Suzuki shirt from Deadlock, and I was like, I should probably watch a Cutie Suzuki match if I bought yeah. the shirt. Um, and then I watched like a couple Cutie Suzuki matches, and I saw a like music video from Pure Wave, which is Cutie Suzuki and Megumi Kudo. And then I was like, oh, Megumi Kudo is cooler. So I started watching Megumi Kudo, and then from there I watched Dream Slam, and then so on and so forth. So it is pretty much, it's very wrestler based. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, especially because if you pick like a company, like if you want to watch all of Arjian, you could find it on archive maybe not all of it but you can find a lot of shows uh online but you're gonna get burnt out from that uh it's easier to get uh, cherry picky and then if you really want to dive in dive in uh whatever way you want from there but it, it i would say start cherry picking your favorite wrestlers and just want to see some of their older matches yeah and i mean focus on like big singles matches because that, those were the ones for a while there that people were really trying yeah. um and if it's a cork and all the better the yeah if it's a cork and all the better if it's a bigger venue all the better if it's an indie then you will know the green ring mat that is where legendary shit happened if you see a green ring mat <laughs> and what looks like shinjuku face you are in for a good time uh so that's that's kind of my one um the next question, um, Doc Spoon, we love you. Uh, this was meant to be a retro Q and A, but we will answer your question anyway because you make us really nice graphics, and uh, you and I talk about Football Manager all the time, and nobody else will listen to me. So it's very funny because every time I message him on Discord, it's like has been playing yes. Football Manager for yeah. six hours. I'm just like Jesus Christ, every day. <laughs> it's very easy to do, in fairness. Uh, um, so Doc Spoon asked, "What would yeah. be the worst possible outcome of the loser leaves faction cage match?" Um, yeah, either of the big three in either faction losing would be horrendous. Like Tora, Momo, Kid having to leave would not be great. I, I think, I think Momo leaving is fine. I think, uh, I think the because I think that Utami could leave and queen's quest would suffer far more than utami would yeah we don't um, want that though 
because I don't think she would change all that much. Yeah, no. The the real answer is uh, either Azumi gone or Natsuko gone. Because that would just be bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, that would hurt everybody involved. Um, obviously, the more realistic answers are like, oh, Utami, but it's like, you know, that would suck, but it's not, like, world-ending. It would make sense. But, like, Natsuko getting ousted would just be, would kill Natsuko and Oedo Tai. Uh, I think Azumi leaving would kind of take away the soul of Queen's Quest in a certain mm-hmm. way. The only person who's been in the group for, you know, five plus years now. Yeah, th- those You're are damn right. Um, let's see. Uh, the next question then, where the fuck are all the Mariko Yoshida matters? Um, you know, there's a funny Arjun. part of this. Mariko Yoshida, <laughs> well, no, there's, there's I think there's a, a YouTube channel called S Ovation that I'm pretty sure she runs and she's uploaded... Uh, all of these matches from a promotion called Ibuki, which she ran. So she's like the main event, main star of this Ibuki promotion. And she just put it all on YouTube a few years ago. So uh, yeah, S Ovation is where you want to go for Mariko Yoshida. Or yeah, Arjun, because the, they were like, shit, we have nobody else. Please be our ace. So that's there you go. Yeah, and, and she had the, the Spider-Man gear peak. Um, peak right there. And said, if you could choose one Joshi from that era to compete in the five star this year in their prime, who would it be? Um, so, I mean, I guess people are probably expecting me to say Azure Kong, but I, I'm, I'm throwing a curveball here. Azure Kong may be the best wrestler to have ever lived, but the peak of Akira Hokuto is the best wrestler. That, like, that is the best period that any pro yeah. wrestler has ever had. Like, prime peak Akira Hokuto is the single greatest thing wrestling has ever seen. So prime Akira Hokuto in the GP is who I would go for. Yeah, no, that, that's that's a good answer. I would probably steal it. Um, okay, I'm trying to just think of, like, who's, like, a consistency type of wrestler who can, like, have all of those matches back-to-back. In their peak... Um, I'm, I'm just, mm-hmm. it's, it's Hokuto. <laughs> like, like that's, like, that's the answer. You think really. of all the matches um, and you're like, I would want Dangerous yeah. Queen Hokuto against this person. Like, all of them. Yeah, um, yeah, I, d- I don't have anyone else. All it's right. pretty much just Hokuto. Uh, maybe, maybe one of the, like, you know what? Fuck it. Sakura Hirota. Peak Sakura Hirota. Yeah, you could, yeah. You, Saki's yeah. not in the tournament this year. Get, give me, give me a real, you know, give me Hoda in it, or not Hoda, uh, Hirota. Hoda in it would be cool too. Give me Hirota in it, uh, and that would be really, really funny, and it would bring a little bit more uh, comedy to the comedy list uh, five star this year. You know, there's not really any yeah. comedy wrestlers in it this this time around, so I think Sakura Hirota would be a breath of fresh air for. All right, that star. is fair. Uh, the next uh, question comes from Scott himself: Emi Sakura or Miko Satomura? Um, this is a controversial one, maybe, but I would go for Emi Sakura. So would yeah. I. <laughs> like, uh, and I, I, I have a question uh, in a second about Mako. Um, I like Mako. She's never been even, like, near my favorites. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? I, uh... Like, I think she's really good, and, like, obviously she's had, like, great matches, but, like, I've just always... In a way, I've always favored her opponents pretty much yeah. every single time I've seen her wrestle. And that's okay. Like, that works for a lot of wrestlers. I think that's, part, like, she kind of imparted that into Hashimoto, right? Because mm-hmm. she's great. I love Hashimoto. I probably like Hashimoto more than Mako. Um, but I'm always rooting against her, obviously. Uh, it's just that vibe. But, yeah, I, I've never been the biggest Mako Samara fan. And Emi Sakura is just, like, she's my queen. She's my god. I got to see her last week. I literally lost my voice the mm-hmm. second she came out. Wow. She was the first. She was the first dark match, and I just started screaming. Lost my voice, like Incredible. just because I was that like starstruck. Her and Maki Ito, they were both in the same match. I was going insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that like, I mean, Sakura's just different. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, 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 sorry, Miko. <laughs> yeah, Miko. I've never. I've rarely seen a wrestler more consistent than Miko. I'll give her that. Like I've I've never seen somebody who could shit out four star matches the way she could. Like she was yeah. just that great, no matter who she was against or what the match was. But Emi Sakura, like no matter who she's against, no matter where it is, no matter the the era, she's killing it. 
Like, she has had such a wide variety of amazing matches against such a, a variety of opponents in so many different styles. She's just, like, there will eventually have to be a case study done on her being one of the best in-ring wrestlers ever. Um, and I just don't think Miko can can hit that, really. Which isn't a, a knock against Miko, but it's just Emmy peaked so high and lasted for longer as well. I mean, she's, you know, Miko's peak kind of ended when she went to the WWE, and Emmy has had great matches since then. And Emmy had great matches before Miko was even a thing. So. Well, didn't Emmy come around in like 96 and Miko came around in uh, um, 95? I don't know. But I know like early Miko wasn't like given much to do, whereas Emmy was trusted like right off the bat. Yeah, and she was. I also think that's a testament to like uh, Emmy didn't really have it. I don't want to, Mako didn't have it easy. Trust me. No. But Emmy didn't have Gaia behind her, right? Mm-hmm. The the best women's company in the world at that moment, right? Like she Emmy didn't have that. She was IWA Japan, I believe. She yeah. wrestled in AJW, but she was no like she was nowhere near the top. Uh, she did go to JWP, and she had like you know she she had stuff but she it felt like she didn't have the backing force of Gaia to Sendai to WWE yeah. like and I don't want to shit on Mako because Mako's great but it, it is a different level when you can perform at such a high level consistently without being in the top company of your generation each mm-hmm. time right because it pretty much was Gaia and then Sendai was was the would you say Sendai was the biggest in the late 2000s? What would be the biggest by then? Yeah, them or Oz it would have been neck and yeah. neck. Yeah. So, but yeah, like Emi Sakura was always just kind of like, I don't know. She she had that independent doing it herself type of thing, type of yeah. vibe, even though she wasn't always independent. It just felt like that. I mean, she she made Ice Driven for God's sakes, and then she quit and made Gato Move, which is like the like an experimental genius. I don't know how. That ha- like I don't know how Gato Move works. It <laughs> shouldn't, yeah, by any means, but it does, uh, and it, it's in large part because of because of Emmy. Um, so yeah, that's that's our that's our ten minutes of talking about how great Emmy Sakura is. All right. Um, what's a five star match on your scale that isn't talked about enough from that era? I think we're both gonna have the same one because we both that's watched it for VTG. Uh, Harley Saito and Shinobu Kandori. Yeah, that's Goes. exactly that one. Absolute excellence uh, from One JWP. One of the greatest technical wrestling matches you will ever see. Yeah. Like, for real. Like, it was murder. And they did the restart thing, and it got more murder. Like, yeah. an incredible, incredible match there. Harley Saito, just an amazing wrestler. Shinobu Kandori, uh, you know, considered a legend for all the right reasons. She was a bad bitch. Um, so, yeah, th- those two had an amazing match that. And I got buried in time because it was from JWP and not. It was JWP. from the original JWP. Yeah, original JWP, like the first of two of them. So, uh, like, I the the video that we both have and both watch is so low quality. Yeah, uh, it's incredible. Like you could like you could barely make out people in it, but you can make out the wrestlers, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's you know it has two thousand viewers in five years on YouTube. Um crazy it's just but it's just the best it is it's, it's amazing best matches you'll ever see um yeah that was mine too. yeah i had a feeling uh to go a bit different then um i guess like the second kandori hokuto match because uh, i feel like it's that gets buried with amongst the first one but i find the second one was way better uh that was at saint battle day 93 um yeah i think the second one is a much better match than the first uh but most people know the first one because that got five stars from dave but I think the second one only got like four at most. I can't remember. He did not like Something the same Battle Day match. And because of that, most people have not seen it, whereas they've seen the first one. Um, so yeah, if we had yeah, to differentiate there, I guess Dylan would go Saito, Kandori, and uh, I would go Kandori, Hokuto, the second. Um, I, I don't know. And I don't know if this one's. Sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> I don't know if this one's a, a five star in my opinion, but it's one of my favorites of all time. It's the first FMW AJW battle, which is Outbreakers, uh, Combat Toyota, and Megumi Kudo against Hokuto and Bull mm. from FMW in '92. Uh, especially, like, I think, again, I don't know if it's like a five star, five star match because I'm not great at rating things in post, but. It's just one of my favorite matches, like ever. Uh, 
it's really really good one of the better uh outbreakers matches i think overall like consistency wise because a lot of people uh rate the fmw girls a bit lower in terms of just you know raw match quality potential but that was just like it was just chaos and it was perfect um and it never really slowed down which is kind of insane for like a 20 some minute match so yeah, that, that's that's my other one that's like really high up that nobody really talks about. All right. Um, the next question then is, what's one Joshi wrestler from today that you'd love to send back to peak AJW? Um, what's peak? <laughs> we, that, I guess that's we're assuming like we work after. rate peak, so the interpromotional yeah. days. Um, okay. I guess this is bias, obviously, but I feel like I would put Takumi Aroha. I think they would have, because she's tall enough and stands out, I think she would have had big matches with like Kanzai... Eagle Sawai, maybe she'd have been a cool tag match with Saito. Um, probably would have wrestled Kong. Like I think she would have had some amazing matches and wouldn't have just been fodder. Um, like a lot of people if you sent them back to that era. But yeah, I think I would go with her, but obviously I mean I'm a bit biased. I think Takumi's one of the best ever, so You. Oh yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. I, I think I think you I think because and in a similar sense, that's like she had this or she has this aura about her. I think she would have an even more of an aura about her back then, um, as long as they didn't just call her Kong, because they like to call anybody who was big. Well, I guess she's not black. Uh, that's why <laughs> I forgot the racism part of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, you definitely. I think she would be a, a different animal. Her and Devil Masami would have like beefed it up in a JWP versus a JW tag and. Oh, I mean, man, you, we've seen, so you and stardom is funny because you is way more of a politicker and way more of like a, I will shoot on you if I have to in stardom. It feels like she's, she's like, she just feels like a really nice person outside of stardom. She just feels like she would be very agreeable and very just like, oh yeah, like not that hard to work with in stardom. It feels like she might hurt uh, and murder someone at any moment. Um, That you would be turned up to a million in AJW, yeah. in yeah. my opinion. And I think that would be perfect. That's fair. Um, she also has a judo background, so she's... A oh, yeah, she'd have, like, judo. fucked by Yoshinaga. Yeah, it would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next one, then, is your favorite rivalry from that era and then the best match that rivalry produced. Um, hmm. I feel like there's only two that I could really choose from. Um... I'll probably go with the one that I liked more in uh, Aja and Bull. I feel like that was just an amazing yeah. story that they told over like two years to make Aja Kong into their new top, top star. Like the progression of that feud. Is your favorite the one where she won? I don't know. Because it's either that or the, the tag that kicked it all off where Bull was just god mode, you know? I feel like mine might be like the big cage match, WrestleMania yeah. cage match, the one on one. I feel like that might be up there for me for that. One. Yeah, I, I would say like the, the as as far to, as far as like favorite rivalry go, it's definitely Bull and Aja. I thought that was just amazing from start mm-hmm. to finish, and how they progressed it with Aja slowly growing more and more into a threat to to Bull. Um, and yeah, it's either the match where Aja wins the belt because they did so many cool callbacks on that one, and the action was just amazing. Uh, or the tag match that kicked it all off, which I mentioned earlier, which was Aja and Bison against Grizzly and Bull, because Bull was just on her shit in that match. Like, I've never seen her quite as monstrous as she was there. Like, when she no-sells the kendo stick shots and then breaks one over Bison's head, the coldest shit you've ever seen. Um... So yeah, either of those two would be like the best match from it, but uh, I can see where you're going with cage match. They had some bloody violent cage match. Yeah, that, that's that's always a fucked story to go back to because I I remember when we were asking questions for Bull, um, we were I was thinking about asking about the cage match, but I was like, I've seen enough interviews from her to know she never wants to think about those fucking cage yeah. matches again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That I don't. I think I'm gonna. T- I'm going to. But yeah. Uh, that that first, not the first cage match. It was technically like the second. Um, but most of Bull's cage yeah. matches are great. I mean, she had one with Hoda on like a house show that was just really good for no fucking reason. Um, but yeah, Bull Aja. And again, I'm. I keep bringing it up. But you know, I'm kind of a nerd about it. Uh, 
Kudo Combat, I really mm. like their feud together. Um, it was definitely highlighted by their last match, by the Combat Retirement match, which I think is one of, one of the best death matches of all time because it was so simple um, in what they did, but like the vibe and the tension was just um, insurmountable. Yeah, that that's probably one of my favorite feuds of that time. And that last match, that combat versus Megumi exploding barbed wire death, uh, was my favorite match from that. It's one of my favorite matches of all time as well. Uh, after the match, Wild Thing playing, and Onita like just trying to like nurse his daughters back to health practically was like just something that will always live in my mind. Um, as Wild Thing blasts mm. him, just like pouring water on them and trying to like get them to like move because they're both fucking dead after a exploding barbed wire death match. It was just there's there's a beauty in death matches that I think some people appreciate, some people don't, and I understand if you don't, but if you like f- if you get it and if you feel it and if you have a connection to that, uh that's one of my favorite rivalries and one of my favorite death matches and matches in general right. of all time. That's pretty that's cool. Um I mean the only other one that you could mention is obviously Nagayo and Dolp. Um just for the crowd reactions yeah. alone. And, I mean, Nagayo and yeah. Asuka, too. I, I, like, yeah, I I really liked As- Asuka and uh, Nagayo. I've talked to you about this before. That's like, I I've I went back a few months ago. I just watched like a bunch of Crush Girl, Crush Gal mm-hmm. stuff, like Pete Crush Gal. And I'm just like, Jaguz is better. But I feel like if I was around during this time, I'd be a Lioness fan. And I'm just like, hey, that hurts me. Because like, in hindsight, Jaguz is like one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. She's like, the best wrestler of all time um but like i just like like linus's match style especially against chigusa was really fun and i really like yeah lioness had like the first women's five-star match so like she was definitely a worker uh, of the two but i mean nagaya was great as well um Nagaya nagaya just had like the yes intangibles so to speak where it's like you can't and Asuka, I mean, we undersell on Asuka a lot. She was also very popular, but it just wasn't Nagayo um, at her peak. Um, yeah, th- those are the questions that I have. You have a few others, uh, if you want to run them down. Yes. Um, Zavi asked, what's a smaller venue you wish Old Startup would have ran? Um, I don't know enough small venues in Japan, Zavi, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but my my immediate thought was like, oh, I, and to this day, I wish they would run more outdoor venues. I think that'd be really fun because I like the way outdoor venues look. Um, I don't know of many in Japan. I was thinking it's like, oh, I remember, uh, I remember Suzuki had his 30th anniversary show like in an outdoor venue when it rained and it was like this incredible, you know, visual. I wonder how many people like that went to that. It was like twenty thousand. I thought it was like a thousand or something, like two thousand. 20,000 people, like, that's insane to me. Uh, so that's not small, but I would say an outdoor venue or just the obvious KBS Hall, if they would have ran it more than once a year. Yeah, um, I'm also not very good at it. I think there's one venue that I like, but I can't remember the name of it. It might be the 176 box, or it's the Azalea Taisho Hall. It's one with, like, all the architecture in the back, and it's, like, a big, almost like, like a circus tent from inside. Um... They did a, a Marvelous versus Seedling show there one time. I cannot remember. Th- hmm. I, it's either 176 box or the Thai show hall, but it's... Uh, yeah, I would love to see Stardom run there, but I don't even know if they were open at that point. I, uh, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. But yeah, that's my one, I guess. Okay. Um, next, next question is from uh, Grimace. They ask, do you prefer Mako's big matches against uh, Hokuto, Kong, or Hojo? Um, like, which one do you prefer? What's Basically, what's Mako's best big match? All right. So, I think I might go with Hokuto. Ooh, which is okay. kind of the basic bitch answer. Right. And it's also kind of, you know, uh, ind- indicative of, like, me not, again, not being as huge on uh, Sendai Girls Mako as many people are. I love that Hokuto match. I think it's one of the best Hokuto matches from after her peak. Mm. Um and also, I love Sakura Hirota parodying it. Uh, I think it's one of the funniest things you will ever see in wrestling. Yes. So if a match is that good to get such a great parody out of it as well, you know, it's, it's that one. Um, yeah. I'm not sure which Aja Kong match uh, they're talking about. 
because I've seen I've seen a couple all of them. Of they're all amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all really yeah. good. But like I I don't know which ones like. The I would guess match the big Yokohama is. one from Gaia. If I had to pick, it would probably be the Gaia one from from Yokohama. Yeah, it it would, it would probably be Gaia. Um. I, I mean, the Hokuto one is a classic. I, I think everybody should watch it. I, I think any Joshi fan should go out of their way to see it. But I think Miko and Kairi was such a perfect meeting point of Miko still being at the peak of her powers and Kairi being arguably the best wrestler on the planet at that point. So I would go with Kairi and Miko just because I thought Kairi was out on her shit for, for that run. Um, but I, I mean, I wouldn't begrudge anyone going with Hokuto and Satomura because, yeah, like that was probably the last great Hokuto match. If I had to to put my pin, you know, stake a claim. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think Miko and Kyrie was just a great midpoint of Kyrie being amazing and and Miko still operating at a high level. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, next one is from widescreen. What's the best old school high speed title match before Hazuki's reign? I'm gonna do a cop out and say that three way with Mayu Kagetsu and Chris Wolf. I just love that match for no reason. Disgraceful. It wasn't even that great. So Disgraceful. I don't know if it's like it's not it's not the best, but I have and this is this is you know it, it's gonna expose me. I have not seen enough old school high speed title matches to uh, give a definitive answer to this. And that's just one that I think of that I just adore just because of the people in it. Because, um, like, the, the only one that stands out from back in the day is the 30-minute one with Yoniyama and uh, mm-hmm. Tayo. And that was a great match, but, like, I, it's 30 minutes, and it's a high-speed match, and I don't know if I could recommend that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm against that in nature, though it was a really great match. So that that's the other one I guess I can say is, like, up there, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna make it easier. Ani Yoniyama Tayo match. They, their chemistry yeah, yeah. and everything they had was just ridiculous. Like, no matter which one you watch, it's gonna be amazing. Whether it is the year end climax twenty three one that went three minutes, or it's the one that went thirty, they they were just ridiculous together. So, yeah, I would I would say just Ani Tayo Yoniyama match because they were just ridiculous. Um. And I mean, I don't, I don't know if you need much more than that. Yeah, the the high speed belt kind of died a bit post Tayo. Um, yeah, I mean, EO was there, and then it, it obviously eventually. Yeah, but and that's why I mean is that it's like there were fun yeah. matches. Like I said, I I really like some of the like, but it was that it was they were fun mm-hmm. matches. They weren't like high class high speed wrestling matches um, that you even see post Suzuki. Uh, if you were including Hazuki, it would be a different question. That is fair, yeah. I mean, I I, I feel like yeah. the, you're not really going to top the Tayo, Leon, Yoniyama era where yes. they were just yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I, I can see why you, yeah. you'd go to Tayo there. That's that's one place where my dark, dark spot, or my blind spot, I should say, is is that uh, er, early era of stardom and right before stardom. With the, like, I, I just haven't seen enough of that. That is fair. Um, I've seen a couple of Yonayama Tayo matches, and they were all good. Did you know Yuhi had a Next high speed Tayo is... match? This is very random. You know Yuhi had a one with Tayo? Oh, yeah. I, I heard about that. I haven't seen it, but really? I've, I've heard that, and I was like, that's an interesting... Yeah. I don't I don't even know how that would I work. mean, they're, they're kicking the shit out of each other. Tayo could kick the shit out of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't underestimate yeah. her. But yeah, I just... Uh... Tayo should come back. Yes. You should wrestle again. Please. You, are, you basically wrestle as a referee. Yeah. Come on now. Um, next question is from Spanner. Uh, which world title result would you have changed? And this is hard mode, so uh, he, he says no Hana over B or like Tam over Mina, but I think it's easier to say to just exclude B and Tam entirely. And this is any world title right. from Joe. Okay. Because uh, um. like, like if, if it wasn't Hana over B, I would say Kagetsu under yeah. B. Right, like that. That's that's the that's the answer. But I'm just excluding that both B fair. and Tam from um, this. I mean, I'm I'm going way uh, back. I feel like you carry Omori winning the three WA belts still makes me scratch my head to this day because she was terrible, and <laughs> that was like the peak of powers of at least three different all timers. 
So I would take that belt off Yukari Amori and never have her win it. Um, even, I mean, I feel like it didn't even matter because the tag scene was so hot that AJW survived regardless. Um, but yeah, I think Yukari Amori would probably be the one. Um, that or, or Sari losing the Sendai belt back to Ashimoto. It was kind of just a bit of a damp squib. Hmm. I don't know. We, I've been exp expending too much hmm. brain power. Yeah, you, you must be uh, getting tired. I don't blame you. Um, a little bit. Um, I'm I'm kind of thinking, like, <laughs> again, I feel like like most of the answers would be like cheating. Um, I mean, mine was essentially like a nothing thing. She was champion for 400 yeah. days though, so you know. Uh. <laughs> uh this is the this is the cop out answer. Tony Storm over yeah, Mayu. <laughs> that is fair. I don't blame you. Uh, or like, yeah, because that's the one that like, because I would say like AF, but like she didn't really like she could have yeah. had the belt. Who cares? Um, yeah, right. I would say Tony over Mayu. Uh, next up is Kiss by Inertia. They ask, did Kana's manifesto have an impact on the wider Joshi scene, or was it rendered pointless? I thought that was like a kayfabe thing. Or at least that's why I heard. You just was can't that, be sure with Kana. Else she was Kana. a wild bitch. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think it died because it didn't work. I mean, anyone trying to do what she did was broken down and gone by, like, 2013. So, like, there's no evidence, really, of that manifesto left in the scene. And any chance she did have of a legacy with Konami, she messed up by leaving her high and dry. So... Yeah, I think it was just, I get what she was going for, but it didn't really work because she left and Ayumi Kurihara was a broken husk by 2013 and Chihiro Aikawa lasted like 50 matches. So, you know, it was it just wasn't conductive to success, really. So, yeah, it just it never really got to stick around. Kana is such an interesting figure. Crazy woman. I, Absolutely yeah. absurd. She Love her at the bits, the, though. She did make the high speed belt, and that's pretty. Well, yeah, that's true. Shout out to her, and she that's that's it. like that's like the least of her of her accolades. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's great. Um, but yeah, I I actually don't know a ton about as I've previously said. I haven't. I don't know a ton about the manifesto, but I do remember hearing that that was like a work of some kind. But who knows? And yeah, they they asked, was it rendered pointless by her signing by WWE? Kind of. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm a real fighter. I'm a I'm a fighter. None of you are real. Oh, I'm going to the PC to learn how to work yeah. the hard cam. Let's, yeah. let's do some let's do some forward worlds, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um next next question we have two more or three more technically. Uh next question is from um Ariona. They wait. Yeah, yeah Ariona. Um, yeah, they ask, uh, would you rather fight three Suzuki cutie Suzuki sized Bonacanos or one Bonacano sized cutie Suzuki? Uh I would never fight. Oh, this is hard, actually. See, I would go with one Bull Nakano sized cutie Suzuki. Just try hitting the cutie special with that oh, yeah, birth. Like, you try and bridge yeah, on yeah, that no. neck with that buddy, you're done for. So, I think a cutie Suzuki sized Bull Nakano. A Bull Nakano sized cutie Suzuki would be rendered pointless because she wouldn't be able to do her stuff and it just wouldn't work. So whereas yeah, yeah, um, like three bulls, um they know still they, they still know nunchucks. They, they can still use nunchucks yeah. and scissors. So Yeah, no, uh there is no there is no reality where I would fight three bull Nakanos. Doesn't matter yeah. how tall or big she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just not happening. Yeah, it's it's the Bull Nakano size cutie Suzuki. I like that question a lot for mm -hmm. That was good. Um Next next question is uh, if Yuzuki Aikawa didn't retire in 2013, how different would Stardom be? Incredibly, it depends on when she ended up eventually retiring. Post yeah, I, I was assuming I, be going. I was assuming it was like if she never retired. Um, okay. If she doesn't, I feel like post Yoshiko Act incident, she like they go all all in on Aikawa. Either they go all in or she leaves. That too, but assuming she stays, I feel like she they would have put the world title on her. Probably done the Mayu double belt. Existed? I don't know. 
I don't think Mayu would be Mayu if Aikawa had stuck around. I think Aikawa would be in that icon of stardom spot. I feel like Threedom would have just not happened. I feel like, like at all. Eo was always going to get pushed, and Kyrie would have carved out a spot I mean, for she, herself. Yeah. But uh, Aikawa would have always stayed like the top dog. Um, even though, I mean, there was probably diminishing returns to what she was doing. But I, I think they would have stayed focused around her post that incident. And she would be considered think, uh, like the top legend by now. Do you think WB would have grabbed her? Nah. With EO and nah, Kyrie? Not with her past. I think they would have taken one look at some of that and gone, nope. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and then the last question, I believe, is was the Dark Age inevitable? What could have been done uh, to make a comeback in the late 2000s, early 2010s, the way some men's promotions did? Um, had the old guard been more uh, financially safe? That's pretty much the answer. Cause... So, okay, so the first, well, safe, the first, go the first half of that, uh, it was inevitable. Like There was too much working against the scene to save it. Like, AJW had a mass exodus, and now you had a bunch of wrestlers in a, an overcrowded market in a shit economy. It, w- it was doomed, really. Like, you know, by what was it? The year 2000, you had AJW, LLPW, JWP, Neo Ladies, Arjan, Jade Star, Gaia, all fighting for the Joshi market. Like, it, it was just unsustainable for, for, like, a number of reasons. And then... You know, because Joshi Wrestling had essentially alienated a lot of the women fans when they, you know, embraced men as their main fan base in the 90s, there was less women that wanted to wrestle. The women who did want to wrestle were probably put off by how violent it was. Or they went, this isn't a viable career. The economy is shit. I can't go be a wrestler. So there wasn't enough new talent to keep all of these companies propped up. Um, and yeah, I mean, the scene just kind of edited itself away because there wasn't enough people there. There wasn't enough fans. It was always kind of doomed to, to, to fall in on itself after the exodus from AJW, I think. Yeah, and I, and I think the, the interesting, like, I think the second part of the question yeah. is interesting because it kind of brings up the contrast to the early men, to the men's promotions, right? I think if AJW had not been run so mm-hmm. poorly by such scumbags they could have just kind of like gone under the radar for a while and not completely died by 2005 and probably picked it back up you know by 2010 uh maybe not pick it back up strongly but it uh, they could have had a similar uh essence to new japan right where it's like oh well new japan like it it dropped off i mean uh the attendance was still there like it wasn't like dead dead as much as AJW was but the attendant like what was it like the observer awards had them the worst company for like three four yeah. years in a row uh because they just weren't producing anything oh it was terribly terrible good. Like, it was a terribly yeah. booked shit company yeah but they because it was ran better than an AJW was it survived obviously and obviously a, a big part of that is also just it had a more built-in fan mm. base that was sticking with it through thick or thin. I don't think AJW was having that as much because most of the fans went away with a lot of other promotions popping up. Yeah. Uh, which is also an interesting, and I know we're, we're over time and we're, you know, but it's also interesting to think about, and I saw this conversation about basketball versus football lately, is uh, the issue with centering the stars over the brand, mm-hmm. right? Um, which in basketball obviously is, is an issue in that like once LeBron retires, people are going to be like, oh, I don't fucking care about fo- basketball anymore because my favorite player retired, which isn't the case for like a football or for whatever, where it's a lot, it's very team based. Um, I think wrestling is kind of like that, but it's interesting because it, it switches back and forth depending on the era. Because uh, like the Attitude Era, I don't think anybody was like, oh, once Steve Austin is done, then I'm done. It's just once Steve Austin left, everything sucked. <laughs> like things went down the down the shitter. It just so happened to coincide. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big part of it is that uh, Joshi Wrestling also was very star based uh, after a while. Be- and once the stars dipped from AJW, the biggest company, it really just cut the fan base into pieces. Uh, 
and it, it made it unsustainable for them to just continue. yeah so yeah if, if AJW had been managed better like New Japan uh, they probably could have just coasted until they popped back up uh, and that's how a comeback would have been made earlier than it did but otherwise because mm-hmm. AJW was just ran so poorly just I think a comeback out. also could have happened once Gaia died because you look at those early Oz Academy shows and the early Sendai Girl shows and you look at the rosters they had and you think if they had run full time and made a go of it, they could have succeeded. Like I always say, Miko facing Sendai girls at a like Sendai pit running the shows she did was criminal. I mean, just running it out yeah. of Sendai is, was a like terrible you put idea. That, you put that roster on those shows in Tokyo and you're drawing way more. And I think Oz Academy was drawing well, but wasn't interested in being a full-time promotion. I think either of those two groups tries to run full-time and, you know, train new wrestlers and sign up some of the people from the smaller groups and just be a proper promotion. I think the scene could have had a mini revival sometime in the late 2000s, led by the likes of Miko and and Aja Kong. But because everybody was so interested in just, well, I'm going to run one show, I'm going to make enough money, and I'm going to make my money, so I don't really care. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that had its diminishing returns, obviously, because Oz Academy is now, you know, a fraction of the size it used to be because Dynamite Kanzai is gone, Aj Kong is gone, you know, I, a lot of the other people are gone. So I think had Sendai and Oz shown a bit more ambition to be full-time promotions and train people and, you know, base out of Tokyo, I think there could have been a chance for a revival, but they really missed the, 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 the game there because the promotions that were running full-time they didn't have enough stars. I mean, like that—that's true. Because like even even before that, I feel like Gaia was also way less ambitious oh, yeah. than they yeah. could have been. Like they, they were very become, happy to they rest could have, on stuff. They could have kept the scene alive yeah. for years. You know what I mean? Like just them alone, uh, and mm-hmm. they could have been the biggest thing. But then they're like, you know, Chikus was just like, oh, I'm cashing out. And she cashed back in like yeah. two years later. But <laughs> I look at like Neo Ladies. I mean. Who was Neo Ladies meant to put over to carry the brand? Like a, a rookie Nagiso Nozaki, uh, Hiroya Matsumoto. Like who was Neo meant to build around once Yoshiko Tamura left? Right? Like yeah, Nanai maybe, Kana maybe, uh, Tayo maybe, but uh, like the promotions like that that were running full time, there just wasn't enough people to like genuinely take the mantle and keep things going for them to work, which is why Neo obviously died eventually and JWP just kind of faded away over time. So I think even the smaller groups that were trying just didn't have enough talent to make it work. And maybe had they worked together more, it would have worked. Um, yeah, I think the blame has to go on Sendai and Oz for not being ambitious enough to, to kind of get things back on the upswing permanently. Yeah, and that, that's it's so interesting how that is like what kind of killed the scene. Well, it, killed I the mean, scene, obviously there's you have the these promotions with TV about, but... pumping out nostalgia stuff and not doing anything new. I mean, of course, people are going to eventually go away. Sorry, they're going to go away. You know, it's like WWE. They relied on nostalgia for a long time there. And once John Cena left, they were like, oh, shit. <laughs> we have... Nobody wants to watch this shit. And it's yeah. like, yeah, because you had an audience and you didn't make them care about anybody new. And they left once the, the legends left, which has happened a lot in Joshi, you know, uh, AJW. Yeah. Yeah. Like, into what I was saying Gaia? about what's it called? Oh, yeah, that too. The yeah. But I mean, I think that was the big issue was like Sendai and Oz had TV and they could have got new people over, um, but they didn't. And I mean, Sendai, I'm being harsh on them because they did try and a lot of them just left, you know, because they weren't really asked living in Sendai as a full-time wrestler and i don't blame them for that um but yeah but even so you look at the kagetsu situation yeah. where like he was like die hard for that goddamn company for five mm-hmm. and a half years and he was like hey am i ever gonna like even beat anybody yeah. ever no fuck you then <laughs> like like really like that it it is just a matter of like how do you like it's just not sustainable to be rest like working at that style or not working at that style but like producing that sort of content as a wrestling company and 
it's sustainable, but it's not going to revitalize. No, not itself. at all. And then we've seen it time and again fail. And it's not easy to get over new stars and all yeah. that, and I get it. But if you're not going to try, you're kind of doomed to fail. Um, I think that's it. Oh. That's all um, for the, for that one. Because uh, I think you could. There's so many layers to a lot of the Joshi falling apart that you could go into. But you know, the main stuff is just that the big the big boys weren't interested in trying, and uh, small boys just didn't have enough talent. So, that went. yeah. Which is which is why it's kind of like seen as such a. It's not seen in like a oh they the the scene was bad at that point because that wasn't the issue it was just like it wasn't very it wasn't yeah. sustainable like the situation that Pretty they were much. in because like that, that's the difference between the men's wrestling at that time and the women's wrestling is like outside of like Noah you look at AJW that was falling apart under Keiji Muto even though you know there was some good stuff there but post Baba that was falling apart New Japan you know say what you will about Nokiism that was also kind of falling apart regardless of whether you know, they wanted to do more martial arts type shit or whatever. It was it was just falling apart. But the the difference is is that the women's stuff wasn't bad. It it kept going. Like it was still at a high level. Maybe not necessarily at the same high level it was ten years prior, but it was still running at a high level. It just didn't have the eyes or the, you know, ambition, I guess you can say, company wise to uh pop off like they are now. Yeah. And yeah, that's all the questions. All right, well, Thank you for that. Thank you for helping us with content. Uh, we will be back next week to maybe discuss the five-star rumble if it's up and kind of the stuff to do with that. But we will be previewing uh, the pay-per-view as I assume that is the weekend after. Finally. Yes. Content. yes um, so we'll be back next week. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to close the show. It is. Oh. We went yes. <laughs> if you want to stand, you may stand. If you want to sit, you may sit. Believe today, shine tomorrow. You decide what you believe in. Ejo. Ejo. 